Um, that, I, I did it with Desi Relaford, another guy from Florida. Yeah, loved it. Um, and uh, Desi was explaining being five foot five, 150 pounds, <laughs> and all he cared about was being on the field. So when he came home the day of the draft, right, it was just another day. And when he came home, his mom was sitting there, right, at the door going like this, and which meant Desi, right, being this tiny little senior with this shotgun arm, uh, he didn't really know what this was. This it fourth, fourth round or fourth pick? Yeah, fourth round. <laughs> it was fourth. fourth round, and and you could see in the interview that he was going back through the vision of walking through the door, his mm -hmm. mom. So, you aren't like Desi. Uh, just in my, in my opinion, what I'm trying to say is you have this uh, a lot more energy is being focused on right. you, your team, your program, and and you. You know you're going. He really kind of mm -hmm. didn't. Um, draft day. Where were you? I know it's pre-ESPN, that kind of stuff. Right? Yeah, none of but that. But still, right? Uh, well, my what, parents' What home, year was it? So your senior I was 89. Year? So it's 1989. Um, that's a pretty big day in your life. Sure. Uh, uh, things uh, change. Yeah. Uh, what was going on that day, man? Um, Where were you? Were you with family? Were you with Yeah, I was with family and my high school coach. Um, yeah. We got the call. And uh, I, I, I didn't know. Like I said, I mean, I didn't speculate if I was going to be the first runner. I knew I had a good shot at being in the first round. Right. But it wasn't something hugely important to me. I felt when I was in the first round that made me kind of have to sign. I think if I'd have been in the third round or later, I probably would have just been. Here I go. Something goes, I, I, I'm going to take you back to 89. Something goes wrong. You're in the third round, something, whatever it is, right? Who would this college has been narrowed down to the two or I had already signed with Mississippi State. Why? Why, why Will Clark and Rafael Palmero. Yeah. <laughs> they brought me in and showed me left field lounge. <laughs> it's one of the best places to play baseball ever. And uh, people people ask me why I missed it all the time. You know why? Because no team in Florida recruited me. I never even got recruited by Florida State or Florida or Miami. I would have definitely went to Florida. They didn't recruit me. They never did. And I know why now. But, you know, because they didn't want to, they thought they were going to waste time with me. You know, so they didn't even give a oh, shot. Oh, because you're definitely going to go in Yeah, the so I learned that later. I have, you know, I, I, I was told that personally. So I always go, why, why, the, why the heck didn't, you know. But that's why. And Ron Paul, you know, had, he was the head sure. coach. And, and and it had to do with the, the, the Baseball USA tie-in. See, Ron Paul was the coordinator for Olympic baseball that time. Okay. Okay. So that was what my dream was, is, and I did win the junior Olympic gold medal. But I wanted to be on the Olympian. I wanted to be on the Olympic team. I wanted sure. to play for my country. So that was the whole process of why I signed with Mississippi State because that was it come right in as as a, a sophomore or excuse me as a freshman. You're starting in left field and third. That's what the first thing he said. So I get drafted and Ron Paul he calls me up and says, "You know what? I'm coming down to sign you." And I said, "Ron, you know, we, you know, I'm probably going to sign. I mean, I don't want you to be there." He goes, "No. Even if I have to give up a scholarship, I'm coming down to sign you." So he comes down. I signed the paperwork. I was reluctant. I ended up signing with uh, with the Red Sox. So I loved that man. So that's why I wanted to go. Much respect. Ron Polk was one of the, you know, he, he was right. He's, he's the kind of guy. He's, you're going to be a guy like this. So every year, Christmas card. Really? Signed person. Never even played the day for him. He still. Didn't forget. Didn't forget. Genuine. You know, and so guys like that goes, that, that to me, and I know that goes a long way with you, is that loyalty, you know, we're talking oh, about. Yeah. That, you know, he was going to be there for me no matter what. So I felt good there. It was an SEC school. It was a smaller school. I was going to be able to get away and, you know, concentrate on what I needed to do. So, um, uh, The contract. I've had one of my students who's now currently in the major leagues. I was there um, in the room with his mom and his pop when the phone call came. Sure. And he was in the first round supplemental. So he's like the maybe the 35th pick. Right. And, uh, and so that, that was a little after you. But I still got to experience that. Um, I always say that Matt had 15 bucks in his savings account and two dollars in his pocket, and he just agreed to this number. Um, who was educating you, you know, for this day and the following day, and and what's offered, or or do you just say yes, or do you ask for more? You know, that's a valid mm. question. Yeah. How, how does how does that work? Is mm. well. Yeah, because like you said, it was a little different in those days. Sure. I mean, now there's a little more awareness. Um, there was a couple agents I was talking to. Right. Um, I'm going to leave them nameless. Sure. But I was talking to a few of them. Um, I ended up signing with one of them. He, he negotiated that contract. He did? He did, yeah. What um, was going to be, right, uh, I'm going back to 89, what was going to be the low end or the high end? You know, 
No. I saw. I can tell you what I signed for. I, but I want. I up. still want to go. Okay. What, what was the low end versus the high end? If you were working with that guy, it was or? a lot lower end then. Yeah. You know, I mean, I know Ben uh, McDonald was my year, and what I mean, he almost signed for three hundred thousand. People were going bananas. Yeah. I mean, that's nothing. Um, so like I knew you, I would. Like I, 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 okay, all right. For that, I would say I knew it was gonna be more than a hundred. I was probably looking less than two twenty five, two fifty, and that was. And where do you fit in? Then? I fit in at one eighty. I was one eighty, one eighty. I think did the same thing with Desi. You ready? All right. So so you're one eighty, and you're a teenager, and you haven't left home yet. <laughs> but you get a portion of this check. Sure. Okay. Here's the check. Mom, Dad, um, you go to a bank. I, whatever you do, you had to have your first thing that you bought because now you have more right. than. Five or ten thousand dollars as a teenager. Yeah, that was laying brick. Yeah, what did you do? I, I, uh, first thing I did, to be honest with you, I I I, I, I gave my parents twenty five thousand of it just to give it to them, and uh, then I went out and bought a car, <laughs> like an idiot. Everybody says yeah. That. Now you so know, I bought off the showroom, which you don't do. <laughs> now you don't do that. What but, was the car? Uh, it was a Mazda RX seven twin turbo, man. Crazy. Stupid. I love you, man. Yeah, totally dumb. <laughs> And that's what you do. I mean, my you know, my mom was a secretary, my dad's a cop. I can't. I get it. Yeah, you know, middle class, lower middle class. Sure. So, what does a kid want to do? Go out and get a really fast car, and one that depreciates uh, twenty five percent when you drive off, off a lot, lot too. They didn't tell you that either when so, you were a kid. But uh, yeah, that's one of the first things. I did. Now, uh, th this is this is also good for another group of people that are watching it. You leave home, you pack your bags, you, but you already did that before. You're a little mm -hmm. bit different than a lot of the interviews because of the Australia and the uh, South Dakota. Where did they send you? Uh, just up the road to Winter Haven. So the Red Sox, literally in your home state, not too far away, the Red Sox bring you in, and you are, right, as a teenager, there's 20 some other guys on the team. You're the number one guy. Mm -hmm. I asked this of Reichardt too because he was not just the number one guy. He was the Ben McDonald. Mm -hmm. of, yeah. um, his goal um, was that he, as best he could, just blended in and was a good teammate. Sure. That he was very blatant about yeah. that answer. There's 20 other guys that are looking, going that guy over there. This is this uh, Blosser guy. He, he's their number one. How was that transition for you? When I would say I was like Reichardt. I, you know, you just try to blend in. I mean, I'm. My, my thought process is we're all, you know, under my belief, we're all equal anyway. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm no better than any of those guys. So I would try to blend in. I would not be. I would think I would be a little more outspoken once I got to know the guys. Okay. Um, but I wouldn't be a wallflower. But I definitely wouldn't be, you know, uh, sure. you know, the loudest guy there, I think. So I'd probably be more like Riker. That first group, um, it's a hard statistic to, to explain, except if I've got a guy like you. When you're a, a first rounder in football, you're going to spend some time in the NFL. Percentages are ridiculous. When you're a first rounder in the NBA, you're going to spend some time in pro basketball. When you're a first rounder in the sport of baseball, less than 50% less than fifty spend one day in the major leagues, um, including this first team that we'll get to that you played for. The statistics say that that first team that you played for, it's, although it's professional baseball, only three or four guys from that first team will make the majors. Mm -hmm. um, that first team with the Red Sox that summer, you know, you made it to the show. Mm -hmm. Was there a couple of other? Yeah, you got you have Mo Vaughn out of that draft. Uh, Eric Wedge was in my draft. Okay. Um, let's see, uh, out of that for the Red Sox, there was, Morton was the other. There was three yeah. first round. I was the first. Pick, and then there was a couple supplementals in the first round. Then okay. Mo, there was Kevin Morton, Bagwell. Yeah. Bagwell is my first roommate in, uh, in cool. the spring training. Love Jeff. Jeff's one of my favorite all-time guys. I mean, I love Bagwell. Bagwell will always be one of my favorite players of all time. That's now he got traded. That hurt him so bad. We don't need to get into that. But that hurt him. Hurt him bad. He was a New England guy all the way. Sure. That's why I didn't go back for the Red Sox. You know, when he yeah. could. But that's another story. So it would be Bagwell, Vaughn, Wedgie, Wedgie played got some time uh, obviously now he's a big league guy big yeah. league manager um, but you had your you fall into the stats four or five guys make yeah, it. yeah. Um, your adjustment how did how did the first how did that first summer go well that's you, a totally you're different get, gig you're gonna get innings you're gonna get at bats oh, yeah. you're, oh, first, yeah. you're the yeah. first round guy so whether you struggle or not yeah. right other like the, your backup mm -hmm. right he's not the first rounder mm -hmm. you're you're going to get that time to either do well or not do well. Yeah, uh, okay, so first experience would have been um, what they call well, like a rookie ball. You play at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Sure. 
Um, it's called the Gulf Coast League, that's the name of it. Uh, I spent a couple months there. Okay, so you go from high school, living at mom and dad's house, everything's great, want. Want. to where you're playing baseball every day at 1 o'clock to 1230, and it's about 1,000 degrees out there, and nobody's there, and nobody cares. There's 12 fans. So you have to care. <laughs> So it's a different world. I mean, you know, there's there's two different, and I'm sure every guy you interview will tell you this, or most of them, two different worlds, amateur and professional, two different worlds. So it was a rude, it was a rude awakening, but it was fun. I loved playing. I was, you know, I was a pro. I was, uh, I was able to go off and do what I wanted to do. Um, um, and um, who'd you spend time with from from that? Team? I, I my buddies from those were. I, I don't know if you know a guy named Jeff McNeely. Okay. Uh, Bob Subsick would have been there. Okay. Subby got some time with, you know. Um, you know, ba well, Bags wasn't that golf coach league. He 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 went to Double A immediately. Did you go uh, to your second season? Did you stay in A ball or did you go? No, up? I got moved up to Florida State League after a couple months. So I, I went oh, for rookie okay. ball, and then I ended up uh, ended up with their short. It was when Red Sox were still in Winter Haven. Okay. It was Winter Haven Red Sox was a Florida State League at that time. So you get happy, then you play at night. Okay. You know, you can play when it's dark out, so it's not so hot. So it's like a huge deal. So. I remember that. I remember getting called up, and I, that was, you know, your your first bit of like, man, I'm playing it, at uh, night, I'm and I'm gonna step up. There's actually, going to be people there <laughs> watching, you know. So not many, but so. Second second year, uh, you go to Winter Haven for spring training. Uh, better yet, what'd you do when you came home that first summer? You were the kid that came back. I to, still to worked. I still went. I still. My mom was working for. <laughs> the Charles Wilson Construction. She was the secretary. Right. So, I you still naturally, did? sir, yeah, still did. You didn't watch. Uh, I'm just saying, with doing a bunch of different, areas, you didn't have to. No, I didn't have to, but I did. I mean, I did. Uh, then from there, uh, I worked. Uh, there was a golf course up the road called Prestancia, and I worked. I worked on the off season. I um, mean, partly because I didn't want. I don't, I don't like sitting around. You sure. know, so uh, that's you know, that's what I did. Didn't really. Think Second about it. year. Did you, when you go back to for spring training, did you move up? Yep, I, I, I got moved up to uh, Lynchburg, which was uh, no, Lynchburg. Yeah, sure. beautiful, beautiful there, beautiful Blue Ridge Mountain area. I got moved up there. Uh, what's that league? Uh, that's the Carolina League. Yeah. So that's when you that's when you go and you're you're gone. You know, you get to travel like a real team. Sure. You go on seven day road trips. You know, you do those types of things. Now in Florida State League, Gulf Coast League, you didn't do that. So you're off on your own. Uh, went good. I had a great year. Um, you're, actually, you're doing, you're doing um, the guys that make it. You're you're doing what you need to to keep moving up the steps. Sure. If I um, digress with a, a question, um, if I take you forward to 37, 39, 40 years old, going back to this group of maybe those four or five years, what coach or manager hmm. may not have been verbally, you know, with you, or maybe it was, but maybe the way he handled himself, who was the most helpful? You know, there had, was there somebody that stood out? To yeah, to talk there, to you? I had. I was, you know, Boston's. That organization's really good with bringing back. You know, the, the guy that I really loved and admired was Johnny Pesky. I mean, Pesky was the, the consummate. When I looked at Johnny, because Johnny was the guy when I was a rookie. You know, I didn't grow up in New England. I didn't really know who Johnny Pesky was or Pesky's Pole or any of those things. You know, and you can't Legend. blame me. You know, I was a kid out of high school. But when I first got to Winter Haven and rookie ball, and it was, you know, Dick Berendino and Pesky would come down there. Felix Maldonado was down there. Ed Papowski, he was another one. He's passed now. Ed Papowski's passed. Great man. But Johnny was that guy, you know, he's always perfectly combed, always had the Cuban style shirt on. And you could just tell he was an old big leaguer, man. He's been around. That guy and was he the was show. the yeah. best guy ever. He would sit down and he would young man what do you what do you you know he was sitting really talking so i would say pesky johnny pesky who now is past you know uh, 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 the pesky pull God. the way the red sox fans uh look at him he's a legend um, forever you know uh and it's it's strange if you look up his stats what it is is he really did great for three or four years and then he found his niche in baseball and the organization sure. whether it's coaching mm -hmm. just working with training or managing a little bit or being a good image for the team that's where he ended people up. People loved him. I mean, when yeah. we go down there, I mean, people would just, it was just unbelievable. I mean, I, I mean, there was a lot of guys down there. Stremsky was down there. Those guys were down there, but people loved Pesky. You know? Interesting.